Welcome back to Learning English with me. If you are new here, my name is Camille and I teach English online. So I'm going to be speaking very slowly in this video because it is for beginners, people that are just now learning English. And we are going to be reading from my beginners short story book. You can find this on my website or Amazon. It's a great tool to help you with your English. So let's get started. This story is called homeschooling. When I wrote this story, I was homeschooling my children. Now they go to school. So let's learn. Because my family travels often, I choose to homeschool my children. Homeschooling means to educate your children from your home. Normally, my children learn every morning, Monday through Friday. My son Maddox is 10 years old. He studies with an online program every day he reads and writes. He studies Portuguese and history. He also studies math and science. His favorite subject is science. Okay, let's go back up to the top. So my family travels a lot. So I have the choice to homeschool. In the United States, you can homeschool your children, which means either the mother or father teaches the child from home. You can choose what you will teach your child. And I had to sign a paper saying, I am homeschooling. And then I have a homeschool organization that protects me, meaning if anything happened, they keep a record of what I teach my children and they give report cards every year. So it's a good thing. I have to pay a small fee to have this homeschool covering. When homeschooling, it's good to have a rhythm. And so I would homeschool my kids most of the time, five days a week, Monday through Friday. So Maddox, he's 10 and he studied online. So using a computer, he would do all of his studies. So we see he studies Portuguese because we live in Portugal, history, math, and science. We call them subjects in English. What subjects do you study? What is your favorite subject? My daughter Ivory is seven years old. Her main focus is reading and writing. So when you're six, seven, you learn how to read and then you learn how to write. She also loves art. She studies Portuguese like Maddox. My other son Cairo is five years old. This year he learned his a, B, C's. A, B, C's is short for the alphabet. The alphabet. Maybe it would be helpful if you're just now learning for me to just quickly say the alphabet in English. Because the other day I realized I didn't even know how to say the whole alphabet in Portuguese and I've been studying and speaking Portuguese for years. So let me do that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. 
So that is how we say the alphabet in American English. That's how we say all the letters. Back to the story, he learns with applications on his tablet. Nowadays, there are so many good apps for children and they can learn many useful things with their tablet, even 15, 20 minutes a day. Moving on, in the United States, children must attend school by the age of six. However, teaching your kids from home is legal and common, like I mentioned. We often watch documentaries as a family. When we travel, we visit historical sites, museums, and other places that teach us about where we are visiting. We spend time reading books together, baking, and working on art projects. My kids also love the outdoors. We play at the park or the beach, and we go on nature walks. I think being outside is so important. Fresh air is good for us. So let's go back to the story. Documentaries are things that are true. So you can watch a documentary about a place, a person, and you can just learn facts about them. Historical sites and museums, those are things where you can learn about the history of a place or hear the story of a place. My kids like museums, especially ones that have mummies or bones or fossils. And then, of course, reading books is a great way. Baking, when we bake, it means we make something sweet. If it's not something sweet, we say cooking. Not cook, but cook. Cook. Cooking. So cooking and baking. So baking is usually always something sweet. We bake cakes, muffins, cookies, many different things. Pies. Okay. The outdoors. That just means to be outside, like the park or beach, like I mentioned. And a nature walk is what you do with yourself or with children when you just take a walk outside and you become aware of what's around you. Some people bring binoculars to look through. Some people bring a notebook and pen to write things down or maybe a little net to catch butterflies. It's for fun and it's just to be able to recognize and see nature. And like I said, being outside is so healthy. Breathing in fresh air is so good for us. I like the freedom that homeschooling brings. I don't have to rush out the door in the morning. My children have a lot more time to play and just be kids. We can travel and have a lot more flexibility in our schedule. I don't know if I will homeschool forever, but for now, it's the best choice for us. So freedom, it means being free, especially with the schedule. So rush is the opposite of slow. So I don't like feeling rushed when I know I have to wake up early or be somewhere early in the morning. I don't like the feeling of rushing. I don't think anyone does, but I think we rush too much in general. People are always rushing. They don't even take time to sit down and eat meals. They're just always busy from one thing to the next. Okay, so I talk about flexibility in the schedule. That means we can do things when we want to do them. So I can schedule a doctor's appointment and since we don't have official school, it could be in the morning, if that makes sense. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I actually am now sending my kids for the first time to school here in Portugal so they can learn Portuguese. And so this is the first year I'm not homeschooling in a long time. 
So we'll see how it goes. Let's go over some true and false questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can pause and see all of the questions, solve them yourself, and then press play to check your answers. Number one, homeschooling means educating children at home. True or false? True. Number two, Maddox's favorite subject is history. True or false? False. Number three, Ivory is learning math in homeschooling. True or false? True. Four, Camille doesn't value outdoor time for her children. True or false? False. And the last one, five, homeschooling is not legal in the United States. True or false? False. It is legal. We're going to look at some multiple choice questions. How old is Maddox? A7, B8, C9, D10. D10. What is Ivory's main focus in homeschooling? A. Math and science. B. Reading and writing. C. Art and Portuguese. D. History and geography. B. Reading and writing. 3. How does Cairo learn his ABCs? A, through online programs. B, by reading books. C, with applications on his tablet. D, from watching TV. C, with applications on his tablet. And the next one, what is a common activity the family does when traveling? A, visits amusement parks. B, watches movies. C, visits historical sites and museums. D, plays video games. C, visits historical sites and museums. Last one, it should say five. What does Camille like about homeschooling? A, rushing out the door in the morning. B, more flexibility in her schedule. C, limited outdoor time. D, fixed curriculum. B, more flexibility in her schedule. The last part is fill in the blank and it's more of sort of like a grammar type test, but don't worry. I think you'll do great. So you just choose the correct one. My son Maddox, blank, 10 years old. Am, is, are. Is. My son Maddox is 10 years old. Two. His favorite blank is math. Subject, school, topic. His favorite subject is math. Three, Ivory is seven blank old. Weeks, years, months. Years. Ivory is seven years old. Four, fresh air is good blank us. Four, on, at. Four, fresh air is good for us. Last one, Cairo is blank years old. 10, seven, five. Five, Cairo is five years old. Perfect, how was that? How did you do? Was it hard? Did you get the comprehension questions right? I would recommend if it was hard to not stress, just to go back and listen again. Repetition, practice again, go through the story again. And like I mentioned, you can find this 
whole book filled with 30 stories, all of the comprehension questions, and me reading them. If you go ahead and just go to www.learnenglishwithcamille.com or you can search for them on Amazon for the paperback book. And I also included a link to 250 flashcards with images, which is a good way as well if you like that sort of thing. But you can learn the vocabulary through the stories in context. I hope it was helpful. If you want more videos like this, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel or podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.